Hello, dear friends and colleagues. My name is Sahil Parikh from Columbia University Irving Medical Center in New York City, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr. Edward Choke from Singapore and Dr. Ulf Teichgraber from Jena, Germany. We're here to talk to you about the ecstasy trial results, uh, the sirolimus coated balloon as a safe and effective alternative for the treatment of peripheral vascular disease. Uh, we're excited today to talk to you about this technology because it really represents a new paradigm shift in the use of drug-coated technologies for the treatment of peripheral vascular disease. Specifically, the Magic Touch technology from Concept Medical uses a nanolute technology in which sirolimus drug is developed into submicron particles that are then encapsulated into a highly biocompatible phospholipid, which is then coated in a very specific way onto balloons, which when inflated at a target site, the carrier phospholipid releases the drug using the principles of diffusion to affect bioabsorption and binding specifically to its target. Uh, upon body pH, the carrier will then mimic the, the human phospholipid and release the drug, uh, and then the particles will penetrate to the appropriate layers of the smooth muscle cell within the intima and inhibit intimal hyperplasia. As you're aware, um, this drug carrier, uh, along with its drug, will be uh, achieving 100% coding on the balloon, which is a novel mechanism that Concept Medical has developed for coding. Up to 65% of the drug will be held within the folds of the balloon, such that it will not be scraped off or washed out during transit from access to target site. And there's a unique and proprietary refolding mechanism for the balloon, which allows for this to be uh, ex executed uh, and has been proven in, in human clinical trials. So with that background, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Choke from Singapore, who has some of the world's greatest experience with the uh, Magic Touch technology. Eddie, can you tell me first, uh, what was the trial design of the ecstasy trial and what were the baseline characteristics of your patients? Um, ecstasy is a first in man clinical trial investigating the clinical efficacy and safety of the magic touch serolimus coated balloon for peripheral arterial disease for both femoral popliteal and below the knee lesions. It is designed as a prospective, non-randomized, all-commerce, single-arm trial. The um, primary endpoints were efficacy endpoint and safety endpoints. Um, the efficacy endpoint was primary patency at six months, defined by duplex peak systolic velocity ratio of 2.4 or less. The safety endpoint was defined as a composite of freedom from 30-day mortality and amputation and also six months target lesion revascularization. 50 patients were recruited. And in terms of the demographics of uh, the patients recruited, this was designed as an all commerce trial. So um, this was a, a, a typical real world uh, high risk uh, patients. Uh, when the anesthetists uh, assessed the patients, 80% uh, of the patients were uh, ASA scores of uh, five and six. So they were fairly unfit patients. 90% of patients, uh, sorry, ASA scores of three or four. 90% uh, um, uh, of them had diabetes. Um, uh, up to a third of them had coronary artery disease and 20% were already on dialysis for end-stage renal failure. And the majority of these patients were critical limb ischemia patients, so they had wounds. 94% uh, of them had uh, Rutherford scores of uh, 5 and 6. And of these patients with wounds, a uh, majority of them had Wi-Fi scores of uh, 4 or more. The key primary uh, endpoint was a six months uh, primary patency. And um, if you look at the table below, um, for the entire cohort, the um, six months primary patency was about um, 80%. For femoral popliteal lesions, the six months primary patency was 88%. When you compare this with uh, the uh, major pachytaxel coated balloons and the uh, major randomized control trials, this was comparable. For example, to the Ranger SFA uh, trial, the uh, six months primary patency was about 87%. For the Levant 2 Lutonix trial, the uh, six months primary patency was 90%. However, in this pachytaxel 
coated balloon trials. These were tested mainly on patients with claudicans rather than uh, critical limb ischemia. For below the knee lesions, the primary patency at six months for x c study for the Magic Touch PTA balloon was 74%. And this would seem better than the Pachytaxel coated balloon. In our own Singapore, Singapore trial, looking at Pachytaxel coated balloons for below the knee lesions, the six months primary patency was about 42%. In terms of the other key results from the XOC trial, the freedom from major adverse events for the entire group was quite good at 86%. The six months freedom from target lesion revascularization for the entire group was about 90%. And the six months amputation free survival for the entire group was about uh, 85%. Yeah, so to put that in context, this is really a critical limb ischemia trial with both above and below knee uh, disease in a very sick population. Um, so I think, you know, while we, we would caution against direct comparisons with other trials, since these were not head to head, uh, clinical studies, um, I think the results speak for themselves. So how, how do you interpret these results and, and where do you see the next steps now with this technology? Well, for me, the XOC is a first in human trial. The numbers are small. But the data indicates that magic touch PTA for both femoral popliteal and below the knee lesions shows six months uh, primary patency, which is uh, quite promising in a cohort, like you say, in a cohort of critical limb ischemia patients with fairly long lesions. Primary uh, uh, interest is the below the knee primary patency of uh, 74%. And it also shows a fairly good safety profile. There was no flaking or there was no distal lambilization in any of the uh, 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 patients. And so for me, this is ideal, especially for below the knee lesions. For me, the next step would be to get uh, level A evidence uh, in terms of randomized control trial, that's number one. And secondly, to get more longer term data so as you can see in the next slide, uh, there are uh, randomized controlled trials uh, planned for uh, in the next uh, few months. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, we plan to recruit our first patients, hopefully in uh, quarter three of 2020. There are two randomized controlled trials planned, the future SFA and future BTK trials. In terms of study design for these randomized controlled trials, uh, we will be randomizing peripheral artery disease patients in a two-to-one fashion, two to receive the Magic Touch serolimus coated balloon, and one to receive the uh, 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 conventional uh, 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 standard balloon angioplasty. Um, the primary patency for this trial will be six months. Sorry, the primary outcome for this trial will be six months uh, primary patency defined by uh, duplex peak systolic velocity ratio of 2.4 or less. Uh, patients will be followed up to uh, 24 months. Um, the thing which makes this trial a bit unique compared to other trials is that it will be double blind, which means the patients and the investigators will not know uh, 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 which arm the patient is uh, randomized to. There will be a placebo in terms of an identical looking balloon to the serolimus coated balloon. Well, if these are really impressive data that Eddie just showed us, uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we've been talking a lot in the field about uh, paclitaxel coated balloons and their risk for mortality. Why do you think it's important that we push ahead with serolimus coated balloons at this time? Yeah, ex uh, exactly. You made the point. Uh, few, um, two years ago, we all realized that there is a certain uh, risk. We can debate about it, but still the discussion is vital. And Paclitaxel is now under debate, and we need an a, a alternative. And I think uh, the most promising alternative is really Serolimus, uh, especially uh, from their safety profile. You know this from the coronary as a cardiologist. Uh, it's the main drug used for stents. And now we really have to investigate in depth uh, how it uh, works actually in the peripheral arteries. And as we know, we only have very limited data. I think the ecstasy trial is really promising, but it's the first man, in, uh, first man trial. It only has 50 patients, and now we have to go for bigger cohorts and also for a randomized controlled trial. This is totally necessary at this point. 
So that so with that in mind, uh, Ulf, tell me about the Serona trial and, and and why you've designed it the way you have it, and and what are the prospects for enrolling this definitive trial? Yeah, exactly. Here on the slide, you can see uh, the study design. It's a randomized controlled uh, um, uh, trial comparing um, Serolimus versus uh, Paclitaxel. And here we are actually not looking at one specific product. We are looking at the whole uh, um, products which are right on the market. Those who are on the market in uh, Europe, there are right now about uh, eight different uh, balloons who have reported two years data. So, uh, um, uh, this is uh, standard balloons, you know, also in the US, like the Impact Admiral, the Lutonix balloon, then also the Luminor, Orkite, Ranger, uh, Sequent, Stellarex, and Paseo. And I think it's very important that we really compare against the whole family of those balloons and uh, then to have a good, uh, strong trial. As you can see, um, uh, 478 patients. This is really a large trial and also um, um, a trial which has a one-to-one -one randomization. I think this is also an, an important point to have a really good uh, trial. And we are really looking for the whole range of um, femoral propriety artery lesions uh, from the short lesions up to the uh, to a length of uh, 30 centimeters so that we have the full uh, full range and I think then we can really say and the point is we don't want to uh, want to prove that uh, Serolimus is uh, superior but at least and this is what, what I believe in it will be non-inferiority um, um, to uh, Paclitaxel uh, products but the only way we can we can prove this is by a real head-to-head uh, -head, uh, trial uh, to those products who are right now uh, on the market. No, I agree, Wolf, that having level one data with a real randomized head-to-head -head trial is critically important. Mm -hmm. um, what is your endpoint? What time point will you do, you'll be reading out both safety and efficacy? Yeah, first of all, the the uh, main endpoint is uh, um, uh, patency, uh, primary patency, but, and uh, the safety endpoint is of course uh, all-cause mortality and also minor imputation. So it's a combined endpoint, and uh, this will be reached. So the uh, the primary endpoint for uh, for efficacy will be reached after one year. But after two years, we, we are going to look at uh, safety issues. But I think before there won't be much uh, differences in terms of safety. This is not what I what I really um, expect to be between the two cohorts. And uh, therefore, two years data is really the most important ones in terms of safety. But we have a long term follow up. We, we, we are planning on uh, up to five years. Also important so, so that for, from the beginning on, we have uh, a long term follow up. So this is something we are really um, going forward to her. That's great. Uh, I think this is critically important information for the field. And uh, I think the entire field is moving in this direction where we conduct really properly powered, randomized controlled trials. And then we have to make sure that we don't have lost the follow up, which was one of the major challenges with many of the larger IDE type of trials with paclitaxel coated mm -hmm. balloons. I think it remains uh, unclear what the, the bigger unmet need is above or below the knee. But I think um, with the data combined from ecstasy and with what we'll see from Serona, we're going to have excellent uh, safety and, and efficacy data. And hopefully we'll have a similar uh, below the need data results from, from Eddie and his team in Singapore so that we can uh, apply this technology both above and below the knee. So with that, I want to thank both of you for your time and for your excellent presentations. Uh, I want to thank the audience for their kind attention and Concept Medical for their support. This is an exciting time in the field of peripheral vascular disease intervention, and we look forward to bringing you more data at next year's EuroPCR. Thanks very much for your kind attention.